what is up fight fans i am jason burgles for sure dog.com and i'm joined by a newly minted member of the ufc roster in november he was defending the lfa flyaway title around march we all thought he would be maybe on the contender series that's what the word is but now in may on the 30th he will step into the octagon and be welcomed by former title challenger tim elliott and that man is raw dog himself Brandon Roy. Well, Brandon, congratulations on this UFC contract, and thanks for giving me some time to talk this surprise Octagon debut. Awesome, man. That's a great introduction. I'm all hyped up. <laughs> well, thank you, Dan. I'm glad you liked Whoa. it. Got the chills I got... for the fight night, huh? <laughs> I'm glad I, I'm glad because I have a lot of questions I want to learn about you or learn about all this stuff so the first talk to me about how this all came together like I just kind of mentioned in the opening the word was the stories were in March you were going to be in the contender series I'm guessing during the summer obviously the world changed since then uh, this things got pushed ahead of schedule talk to me about when the UFC first contacted your management about a specifically UFC deal and like what were the emotions was it shock was it all was it relief what, what were you feeling when you found out about this i think it was a little bit all over the place i had a little bit of all that like i was shocked i was in awe i was happy i was like, way too excited all that stuff <laughs> um i always like try like wish i could play it off like oh uh, yeah i've been i knew they were gonna call or it's <laughs> sooner now sooner than later but like in all yeah, it's just a little bit of everything like a, um my manager facetimed me and when he facetimes me i always know it's good news so, <laughs> when i saw the facetime i was just like oh yep See, but I've been waiting for. And uh, yeah, he FaceTimed me and like, I looked at him and he already had a big smile on and I was like, you're shitting me, right? And he was like, nope. <laughs> and then I was like, like uh, I kind of know why I just thought, because I saw Alex Perez had a, a UFC fight. So I was like, who is it, Alex Perez? Mm -hmm. He's like, no, we got Tim Elliott. And I was like, perfect, man. That's exactly what I, that's a perfect mashup, you know? Talk to me about that, because that's what I was going to ask about getting someone like him, you know, such a big name, a, a ranked opponent, a, a notable name like that. Why is it, uh, do you feel that's a perfect matchup for you, even better than what you could have expected? Uh, I feel like it's more of a perfect matchup as in, like, it's just a big name, a big opportunity. Mm. Uh, it's a good way to kind of just establish myself right off the bat, let alone, like, Tim Elliott's an exciting fighter. Tim Elliott brings it. He's going to actually fight me the whole entire time. He's not going to try to hold me down. He's going to try to beat my ass, and I'm going to do somewhat the same. So I think it's a big opportunity for both of us to go earn some money or uh, for me to earn performance of the night or fight of the night kind of thing. So it's a big opportunity for me to go snatch some good money and for my first fight and then actually get a name for myself too is really what I'm looking for, establish myself in the, in the business, you know? He's been around for like a decade. Is that a guy that you've watched, admired, and enjoyed his style, followed a, a bit as you rose up in the sport? Yeah, Tim Elliott's a guy that every time I watch him fight, I don't know, probably for every single one of his last fights, if he's fighting someone except for Demetrius Johnson, I'm going for him, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, he's exciting, and he, he's someone that uh, potentially that everybody wants to watch. So as far as flyweights go, you want the most exciting flyweights just so we can build up this whole entire division, you know. So as far as Tim Elliott goes, he's someone that I respect and someone that I like to watch fight. So. I've always root for him, so I'm glad that it's him, and I'm glad that and there's I have my eye on the whole entire division, of course. But that being said, it's Tim out someone that I like. I like his style. Yeah. It's unorthodox. It's different, and you you. Don't, I always think no two people fight alike. But uh, that being said, is who fights like Tim Allen? Yes. Man, they're not a training partner yes. to fight like him, like. Do you think yeah, so. in a weird way with everything going on because of the, the pandemic and everything, do you think the situation helped push forward this UFC debut timeline? You know, many, you know, maybe since some international fighters could not get into the country, you know, it helped you get this chance much faster. And, and, it, and is it like that weird one positive thing that you can take out of a situation that's pretty much sucked for the entire planet? Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. That's it. I, I'm, um, I guess, like finding a good thing in the quarantine is exactly what it is because <laughs> I probably wouldn't have got the call. And like, there wouldn't have been such a hesitation to like get these fight cards pumping if there wasn't this big quarantine going yeah. on and the cancellation of so many fights and all that. So, and then that being said, is, is people are turning down fights left and right. Like, nobody can really train. So, uh, I imagine Tim, I wasn't Tim Elliott's first name that he got. So, I imagine he had to turn down a few opponents or a few opponents that turned him down that are already in the UFC. And maybe even potentially that aren't in the UFC yet that couldn't make the weight or haven't been training or whatever it is. So I'm glad that I've stayed ready this whole entire time. And then I was getting ready for this fight anyways for the Dana White Contender Series. 
So it was just a kind of opportunity to speed up the process of me going to the UFC and having this debut. Now, just getting the UFC debut, getting the UFC contract, that's more than enough reason to be excited. But like I mentioned, you're going to be fighting Tim, n number 11 ranked guy right now. So to, to jump right into the top 15 in a debut is a big deal. But is that kind of what makes this whole thing extra exciting for you in that you can jump right into the thick of it, in the division, into the rankings right away from the get-go? And like in this division, a year from now, if you, you're performing right, you know, getting impressive wins, you could be in title contention. That's not something you can say for other divisions in the UFC. Does that make this all the more exciting? Because your life can really change in the next year if things go right. That's that's exactly what I've been, like, kind of thinking about. And, like, that, that like, plays such a positive role with fighting Tim Elliott specifically. Fighting anybody in the uh, flyweight division, such a small division yeah. right now, I think there's probably only 15 flyweights in the UFC, mm -hmm. if that many, you know? And uh, fighting Tim Alley, it's just a great opportunity for me to boost my name up there. And like I said, just a big name right off the bat. Um, no matter what, like how many fights I get, if I'm winning, I'm going to go up and uh, right, out, like right away, I'll probably be up in like the top 10 after a few wins, you know, or easily two wins, I'll be in the top 10, no doubt. But uh, that being said, is just the name itself. He won the tough, you know what I'm saying? He fought, he fought, um, he fought for the belt. He's done a lot of great yeah. stuff that, is is a great opportunity for me to establish myself honestly is this the type of thing that you feel if you win because of what you were saying like if you win and especially oppressively you should be maybe 11 12th ranked uh, in, in the, the the top 15 the next day yeah exactly that's exactly how i feel about that is it, it's a great opportunity to go change my life you know um anytime you sign with the usc it's a great opportunity mm. to change your life but this is especially great. Who do you know right off the bat that gets signed the UFC? Yeah. That's not uh, that's not um, coming from Bellator or whatever it is that is that's getting this opportunity to fight number eleven in the world, number ten. You know what I'm saying? So it's a great opportunity, and I can't wait to just show out right there. Tim is really unorthodox, an orthodox fighter. I mean, on the feet, on the mat, it, super. It, you know, it's to a level that even like a freaking technical wizard like Demetrius Johnson had trouble with him, which is saying so. Now you are not going to get that classic eight to twelve week camp to prepare for his wild style. You have a great team behind you with the Factory X dudes, great, great guys. What has the preparation been like? Do you have to be sort of measured and, and with him as not you know so you don't fall into his wildest traps and the craziness he can offer or because there is so much tape on him the guys had like near 30 fights do your coaches you know have they identify some clear weaknesses you feel really confident that you can exploit on fight night um we have, well, keep in mind i've watched this guy forever too so I, like i've known tim alley and his fighting style for as long as he's been on TV mm. and has been a name, you know? So I've had the opportunity to do all this film work on him for years and I've already picked him apart and kind of just picked tendencies and stuff. Mm. And that's exactly what my corners have done too, is we just see tendencies and a little bit of stuff. But for me, I like that it's it's only a few weeks that I, I've had a lot of time to prepare for him, honestly. And he's had bare minimum of time to prepare for me. I, I think me and him are a little bit of a style of like, I don't think he knows what he's going to go out there and do next. And sometimes I don't really know what I'm going to go out there and do next. Sometimes I'm just throwing shit and hope it sticks. <laughs> and sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. But that being said is I have a little bit of a crazy style too. And I, I think uh, I have a little bit more crazy style, but I also think I fight a little bit more technical than him. So I think I have a chance to exploit him where he messes up and a chance to see what he does uh, already because I do a lot of the same stuff. I'll do some spinning stuff. I'll do a little bit of crazy stuff. I'll surprise myself when I do that. I'm like, oh shit, I just threw that and that worked. All right, whatever. So, how hard is how hard is that to prepare for? Because you know he fights weird, like his hands are down. He's doing the, all these weird things, and it's like you know, like <laughs> is that you know? Because you've had enough experience now. You've had high level experience being a champion at LFA. Is is it? harder to prepare for that is it easier do you feel like with a, the right kind of precision being sharp being technical you could pick a guy apart like this or is it just weird and you kind of go into a fight a little extra nervous because you don't know what the hell's coming this is some crazy stuff he'll be willing to do and he's willing to take a shot so he doesn't mind being crazy yeah. to take a few shots yeah i know uh that's actually funny you asked that because like i always tell people like it's when someone comes into the gym it's not the technical guy that i'm ever worried mm. about the technical guy i could almost predict what he's gonna throw mm. you know what i'm saying it's a dude who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He's going to throw this, throw this over here. And all of a sudden, I'm getting pieced up by a day on a, a guy on his first day. And I'm like, what, what is happening right now? Like, why am I even doing yeah, this? Yeah. It's just because he's so uh, unorthodox, un unpredictable. 
that being said is uh i i've i've done like i said i've watched him fight pretty much most of his yeah. last probably like five years of fighting i've watched he has a little bit of dominant crew style i've watched dominic when i was younger when i was like 15 16 i was picking apart dominic cruz thinking i was gonna have to fight him one day you know what i'm saying so i have a little bit of like like i said i think i have a little bit of an advantage just i've had there's film work out on yeah. him but there's i've had an opportunity to watch him like a million times you know and i've watched him even after his fights i've watched his fights like on youtube and you know what i'm saying like our like ufc fight pass and just rewatch his fights and I, I already knew what i was getting into when i said yes to that fight and I already knew that, but that being said, is like that unpredictable bull style is like I'd rather fight like a way more technical <laughs> striker that like you could almost see it compared to like some dude that's you've never yeah. you can't I I don't have a training partner that fights yeah. like him. I, I have probably fifty training partners. <laughs> I don't have a training partner that fights like him at all. So it's kind of brings a little bit of excitement, a little bit of a puzzle I can go pick apart on the fly. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like I said, there's tendencies that I can look out yeah. for, but I don't want to overthink it. I don't want to overthink thinking I'm like, well, what's he doing right here? What's he doing? Because I don't give a shit what he's doing. I'm going to go do me. I'm going to go. And you know, everybody says that. So who knows what's going to happen when the lights are on. But that being said is I want to go out there and do me and impose my will. And I wanted to be like, what the fuck was that? You know, when, when he's fighting me, yeah, yeah. you know? But that being said, he's a wild dude, so we'll see. <laughs> now, as we're recording this, the news pretty much came today that, you know, it was official, you're going to make your debut against Timely and all this stuff like that. Like, it's only been a few hours, but has it already been noticeable? Are you getting all the messages? Like, has the social media jumped up by, like, 100,000 followers already? Have has you have you felt that yet? Or, you, you know, you're still living the normal life, people are not aware that you are now a UFC fighter, you know, what's it been the last few hours? Where's been like now? It's uh, I, I've been super overwhelmed, man. I didn't expect it. Like I said, I got way too many messages going on. I don't even want to look through them right now. I'm just kind of, I'm talking to the people who matter right now, and are, I mean everybody matters, but I'm talking to like yeah, my main yeah. people who I was who I was talking to before the UFC happened. You know, so, uh, like I said, I'm super overwhelmed by the messages, and like I love the support, and I'm so happy that people are excited to see me do it, and I'm excited to go show my worth out there, man. I'm excited to show that I. I earned a spot at this table and that I belong here and I'm going to go eat with the rest of these big names and all these other guys out there, man. Now, I want to talk about to end it, you know, making this journey here because a f big factor to making this journey to get to the UFC is the LFA and it's a story for a lot of fighters. I, I, you know, because LFA is really becoming that gateway for so many fighters into the UFC and also for Bellator too, the interesting thing is you became flyweight champion on your second try. You originally lost to Casey Kenny at the end of 2018 and then got another crack when he vacated to go to the UFC. To win the title, on that second try defend it you know ca it catapult you into a ufc contract how big of a deal is it to win the lfa title for fighter on the come up like yourself for me man win the lfa title is super cool and like that was like as soon as i signed that promotion it's not like a big goal of mine but for me like winning the lfa title is just a shot at the ufc man it's a big opportunity to go to the ufc and like it's a big it's a big opportunity to uh, boost my name before i went to the ufc too which is really cool yep. Cause like I think the reason I announced the fight today was because I saw like an article come out saying Brandon Royval versus Tim Elliott potential fight of the night stealer and people don't say people wouldn't say that if they couldn't see me fight yep. you know but everybody would able to watch me fight in the LFA able to watch me fight for the title and they get to see that oh well, he's an exciting fighter too and Tim Elliott's obviously an exciting mm -hmm. fighter um, so then I have that kind of like catapult me up there and just give me a little bit of more notoriety uh, while I get to the UFC man so I'm not going in there with just you know what I'm saying? 20 followers and, you know, so I have a little bit of a, like a name that yeah. I kind of already established yep. for myself. So uh, the LFA was a great opportunity to do that. And I love that promotion because of that. 